All right, so now we are at the problem print prime numbers. And this is a bit of a different problem because we don't have any table in here. So let's first start to read the text. Write a query to print all prime numbers less than or equal to 1000. Print your result on a single line and use the ampersand character as your separator instead of a space. For example, the output for all prime numbers smaller or equal to 10 would be 2 and 3 and 5 and 7. Sounds pretty simple, but to solve it, we have to think about it. At first, of course, we have to think what are prime numbers. So we have to revisit that. Prime numbers definition, I would say, is only possible to divide by 1 and by itself. So therefore, ah, in the exception, Exception 1 is not a prime number. So as we can see here, 1 is not a prime number. So the 2 is a prime number because you can only divide by 1 and by itself. 3 also, 4 you can divide by 2, so that will not qualify and so on. So we have to kind of figure out how to make this definition into an SQL code. Only possible to divide by 1 and by itself. And first we have to figure out something else because we don't have any table here given like in the other tasks. So what I would do first is I would create a table. You can do that with the create table command. And now I have to check how exactly I would write this syntax. Create table in this SQL. So how would you write this syntax? Okay, that's a lot of code. All right, so I think we can just um, write how we want to call the table. Okay, so this looks uh, simple enough. So we create the table, we don't need to call the database or schema, but we have to write the table name. Okay, so let's call this table name prime numbers. And what do we have? So we open up the brackets and we say what column and what data type it is. And if it's a primary key, but we don't really have to define that. So how do we want to call the column? We call the column number and we make it of data type integer. I think that's it. So we just need one column and that is number and there we write all the numbers between that are less than or equal than 1000, all the prime numbers. So let's run this code if this create table command is correct. After the words we put this uh, semicolon so as to finish this command. So no response. That's fine because we didn't give any output. We just created this table and you will not see any result from that. But it didn't, gi didn't give us any mistake, any error. So the create table seems to be working. So next step from create table is we can insert something into the table. So now we have an empty data table called prime numbers with one column that is called number and is an integer column. So now we insert into this table. In what do we want to insert? Uh, in the number column and the values should be, let's write one, two, three, just for testing purposes. Okay, so the syntax is not correct. course we have to give the table name insert into prime numbers the column number and the values okay we can only insert one value at a time so let's just put one in here okay so I think it was working we can check that by selecting everything from the table prime number so what I'm expecting is now to get the just the value 1 out of here because we inserted the value 1 into the table and we got it so here we have the output 1 okay so we don't want to have 1 in the table we actually want to have all the prime numbers 
less than or equal to 1000. So for that we definitely gonna need variables that we can then iterate over to really figure out these prime numbers. So to use the variables we first have to declare them like bringing them into existence into this world. So we declare let's say um, numbers variable we call it nr for number and we declare it as integer and then we make uh, select nr equals 1 so we write uh, this variable should be 1 and then we say insert into the table and the value is not 1 so, but we are using the value nr variable so this should also come out to 1 because now we are using the variable instead of the explicit 1 that we are inserting into the prime numbers table let's see if this works like that and it works the same so this works also now we implicitly inserted the one and the advantage is now we have uh, the one as an add and r variable and we can change this variable as we want we started with one as the variable and we say here while n r smaller or equal to 1000 and or no we don't need end we just write it like that and then so now we are making a while loop so we want to iterate over this variable that starts at 1 and we want to go until 1000 and to iterate over it we need a while function so that's why I wrote here while at nr smaller or equal to 1000 begin and then I can do something and then I end the while loop again and in the end of the while loop, I want to iterate one more. So it's the while loop is not infinite. And I want to put one higher number on the variable. So I write select add nr equals add nr plus one. So this is, that's how it can loop. So while it is smaller or equal to 1000, I'm gonna do this. And I, here I put some code. And then in the end I put, a higher number so we start with one and then it goes through the code and then it changes to two then it goes through the code and changes to three and so on until it's at 1000 and if it's higher than 1000 it's going to stop with the loop because that is our condition so this code should actually what should we put in here as a code so we actually have to kind of have a way that we can detect for a prime number we check for this prime number and then if it is a prime number, then we want to insert it into the table prime numbers. If it's not a prime number, we don't want to insert it. So how can we check for it? Now, first, let's make a check run from this to see if the syntax is correct. Yeah, looks correct. And now we have 1001 in the end because this goes until 1000 and then it gives one more and then we have 1001 and then this is actually what gets inserted into at nr so everything was working so now we have to figure out what do we want to check for a prime number so we say if ah so now we need another variable actually we need the divider because we have to divide this number nr with some with another variable so i'm gonna call this divider select divider no not select first i have to declare it of course so first we have to declare another variable declare a divider is also an in variable and i can call select divider equals at nr minus one so what do i want to do with this divider variable well i want to figure out this prime number definition so it's only possible to divide by one and by itself so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this nr number and i'm going to iterate over it and i'm going to check for example if the number is five i'm going to check is it dividable by four is it uh, can you divide it by three can you divide it by one if it's only divided by one and by the number itself which is five which is always the case like an integer is always divided by itself we don't even have to check that then it is a prime number so this is exactly what i want to test here and for that i have to actually make another while 
another loop because I have to also go through the divider for every variable. So while the divider is bigger than one, because one, uh, it is anyway uh, dividable by one, every number. So while the begin divider is bigger than one, I'm gonna begin with something and I'm gonna end with something. And now we are gonna make the test. If at nr percent divider, now what does this percent mean? I'm gonna explain to you very shortly. If at nr percent divider equals zero, then we want to do something. Okay, so now we made a condition at nr percent divider equals zero. Now what does it mean? So this percent sign means the rest of the division should be zero. So for example, if we have the nr, let's say nr is five, and then we have the divider and it's gonna be it iterate over div divider. At first it's gonna be four. So we make five percent four. What does it mean? So how, what is the rest when you divide five with four? The rest would be one. Why would the rest be one? Well, because you can fit the four one time into the five and the rest of this one time is gonna be also one. So let's make another example, 6% four, the rest is two. And when we make 7% four, the rest is three. And now when we make 8% four, what, what would be the rest? So the rest will not be four, the rest will be zero. Why will the rest be zero? Because the four fits two times in the eight and the rest, there is no rest, so the rest is zero. So we want to get exactly this div divisions where the rest is zero, because then we know, aha, uh -huh, this is not a prime number, because there is another number that it can actually be divided by. So we have to have some kind of check here. I'm gonna do select uh, prime. I'm gonna need another variable here because I have to make like a Boolean um, control statement here, which is true or false. Now, MSSQL doesn't have the Boolean type, but it has bit type. So we can just put the bit to zero or one. If it is not a prime number, we can make it to zero. So now we make add prime, which we just no, actually we don't write select here. We have to declare the variable. Declare prime is a bit variable. So we have to put this here. And if this equals zero is correct, then prime is one, no, zero. Then it is not a prime number. If it's zero, it's not a prime number. Okay, so let's assume in the beginning at the while loop that everything is a prime number. So we write at prime equals one. At first we are going to assume everything is a, is a prime number. So we write at prime equals one. And then we make while divider bigger one. So now we go through this iteration from the divider and we check for the rest. If at nr percent divider equals zero, then prime is zero. Actually, we have to finish the statement here now. And now we still, which is very important, we still have to write at divider, select actually, yes. Select at divider equals at divider minus one. So we have to take one away from the divider, otherwise this while loop is never gonna finish because the divider has to get smaller with every iteration. And now we can check everyone if every number below than the at nr number, if it's divided by this number. Okay, so now we check this one. So let's start from the beginning, what did we do? So we declared three variables. We defined here the start of the variables. We said nr is one, divider is nr minus one. This divider is equals nr minus one. Actually, we don't define that here. We define that after the while loop because at every start after after this uh, nr got changed, we also have to change the divider variable again. So if we go one up with the nr, we have to also set the divider variable again. 
on one number below nr. So now we start with the while loop. So while uh, nr is now 1, uh, while nr is smaller or equal to 1000, that 1 is smaller than 1000, so that fits. We begin the while loop, then we select, uh, then we set the divider variable. We set it to 1 smaller than nr. And we assume here that prime, that everything is a prime number. And now we are actually going to test for the prime number. And therefore, we define this divider and we are going to look if this divider is still bigger than 1, then we are going to make this test with a divider and with an r. And if the rest equals 0, then actually it is not a prime number. And if this is never true, then this prime will not change and then it is in the end a prime number and it will also then be inserted. So the insertion part we still have to do. So let's make a quick check if all the code is running correctly as we define it right now. Okay, line 14, incorrect syntax near prime. Okay, of course we have to write select prime equals 1. That's how we define it. And what is in another incorrect syntax? Line 18. Probably the same mistake. Yes. Select prime equals zero. Okay, it seems to be working. No more errors in the code. So this insertion, of course, is still wrong because we don't want 1001 in the end. So let's write another insertion. And we want to do it exactly after our prime number test. So here is our prime number test. And if it is after this while loop, if it is a prime number, then it got changed to zero if it's uh, not a prime number. Otherwise, it stays prime equals one. So in the end, after we made our prime number test, if prime is still equals to one, then we want to insert into our table prime numbers, which we defined in the beginning. We want to insert in the column number and we want to insert values, the value from the variable nr. Let's see. And in the end, we select star from prime numbers. So let's see what prime numbers we are putting in there, if it's correct now. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. One, two, three, five, seven. But actually, the one is not defined as a prime number, so we have to exclude the one, but the other one looks good. Two, three, five, seven looks good. We still have to take out the one. We can put this, for example, here in the if condition, if prime equals one or at an R does not equal one. So if, it's, if it equals one, we don't want to put it actually in the table. Let's run this again now. Okay, so the one is still in. That should not be the case. If prime equals one or nr not equal to one. And of course we have to make a logical and and not an or because then just one of the conditions, but both of the conditions actually have to be fulfilled. So we have to write and. Okay, so that looks good, two, three, five, seven. And now, of course, the output is not yet exactly how we should look. So it should be two and three and five, everything into one row. And for that, we actually have to use another function in MSS Square. Thankfully, we have a function that can solve exactly this problem. And I believe it is called string add. So let's look this up again string add function ms square so string add yes that sounds good oh string egg for aggregating ah not add but string egg a g g and what do we want to aggregate well we want to aggregate the column number we called it number here in the table and we want to use something between the aggregation the separator should be the ampersand sign here like in the beginning and that should be our solution okay it looks like we still have to put this like that and it works